All right. into ATMs and you started seeing those scan and recognize what the digits were, uh, that was a lot of Jan McCoon's work among uh, many others. So now this guy is figuring out how to make your news feed on Facebook even better <laughs> <laughs> using neural networks. <laughs> Amazon was also there. They had their drones. So supposedly soon enough drones are going to be the guys that uh, drop off our Amazon packages. They're going to put UPS out of work. <laughs> Now, personally, even though these things were on display, I think it's going to be a ways until they actually get that into production. Um, but it is a good publicity stunt, and they were there, and uh, you know they're definitely starting to get interested in neural networks. Um, DeepMind was a company that I hadn't heard of uh, until I got up there, and I met a bunch of the guys that worked there, and you know I told them I had never heard of it, but apparently they were doing a bunch of work on deep learning. They had a really interesting demo. Uh, that they showed off where they uh, took Atari games and basically took the raw pixel data coming out of those games and then fed it to a convolutional neural network to basically build uh, features uh, based on the game, unique to the game, uh, that might help it differentiate between danger and not danger. And then it takes those features and feeds it into a Q-learning algorithm, which is just a way to do reinforcement learning. Um, and it was able to learn to play these games better than expert human players. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so, so, so that's what they've got neural networks working on is Atari games. 
But it was a really cool demo, and it was funny because a couple weeks later I saw this. <laughs> uh, Google bought it for half a billion dollars or so, or some obscene number like that. Uh, I think there's only like 50 guys at that company, but uh, they're all going to be at Google now, working on uh, you know building uh, something that's better than humans. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of interesting research that was presented. Um, so, so I'm going to start with this one. And this, I can't really explain to you how this works, and I have a very superficial understanding of the paper, but I saw a presentation on it and thought the result was interesting enough to where I'm going to show you the result and then recommend you read the paper. But basically what these guys are saying is these are uh, essentially uh, connection strengths, right? Weights from a neural network, okay, visualized. And then this one is the, the weights in a human, and then this one are the weights in a, a monkey. And what they're claiming here is that recurrent neural networks are now uh, as good at object detection as uh, just about as good as monkeys and humans, and much, much better than worms. <laughs> I guess that's good. Now, let me qualify that a little because humans still are much better at object recognition, but what I mean by object detection is if you see a threatening looking spider coming right at you, you know in a second that you need to react, right? That's the, the kind of feed forward uh, passage in your uh, visual cortex, all right? But if it takes longer than a, just a split second for you to recognize, you start looking at different things in the image and then piecing it together, oh, this is what this actually is, and, and you logic your way through it. So neural networks can't really do that logic, that top-down reasoning part, but they can do the feed-forward kind of recognition, like, oh, danger, really well. Um, and this paper proves it. <laughs> so, so check that one out. I'm going to post all these slides later on the, on the Meetup site in a comment, so uh, you, know, you can check out these papers if you want. That's a link to it. Um, oh, yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, Actually, before I jump into this, let me, I'm going to jump to the next slide and then come back. So, so let's talk about Pandora for a second, okay? Let's say, when, when, was, when did Pandora come out? Uh, 2003, 2004, something like that? Uh, so let's take a, take a trip back to then. Let's say I wanted to build Pandora before it existed. What would I need? Well, I'd need music, for starters. I'd need to deal with all the licensing around that music. I'd need to find a way to stream that music, deal with all the infrastructure around that. I would need some kind of recommendation engine. People are going to give the music a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on how they like it. But then there's something else that I really need that's really key, and I need features that I'm going to feed to that recommendation engine. Because we don't really have a way to take raw audio data, the music, and generate uh, features based on it. So, so here's what Pandora did. And they're smart guys, you know, and they, they were efficient about it. So they did this thing called the, the Music Genome Project. And I'm just going to read this because it's really hard to see here. But here's what it, what it says right here. Each song in the Music Genome Project is analyzed using up to 450 distinct musical characteristics by a trained music analyst. These attributes capture not only the musical identity of a something, but also the many significant qualities that are important to understand the musical preferences of listeners. The typical music analysts working on the Music Genome Project has a four-year degree in music theory, <laughs> composition, or performance, has passed through a selective screening process, and has completed, in, completed intense training in the music genome's rigorous and precise <laughs> methodology. So to paraphrase that, they hired a bunch of guys that are experts in listening to music and choosing from a list of 450 different features that might represent that music and doing that for like eight, nine hours a day. That's all they do all day. So, so, so I don't know how much it costs them. And, and they still do this. It says right at the bottom, we, we continuously update our library. So they got this whole room full of these guys just listening to music and you know, picking, checking off boxes and the list of 